Okay, that is the opening scene from my new favorite TV show, the amazing comedy series Reservation Dogs, which tells the story of four indigenous teens in rural Oklahoma who are trying to escape to California. The show has a nearly all indigenous cast and crew and was just picked up for a second season at FX on Hulu. Jo Hulu, excuse me, joining me now is one of the stars of Reservation Dogs, Devery Jacobs, who plays Alora Dan, and I am so excited to have you uh, with me. I have to say, um, this show feels very very authentic. Uh, and I think that perhaps is something due to the writer's room, which I understand is also um, indigenous. And I understand that you're joining the writer's room next season. Um, so congratulations on that. But, but talk to me about having uh, it, 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 people who, who look like you and are a part of the culture um, to help create the storylines and the process, how that makes a difference in the authentic storytelling. Absolutely. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm so proud to be a part of Reservation Docs. And also, I would be a fan of it even if I wasn't in it. And so for me, that's like a marker that we're doing something right. Um, but it it is imperative that we have control of our own stories. For Indigenous people, we have been in film and TV since its inception, but it's been a lot of misrepresentation or complete lack of representation and blackface or sorry red face which is similar to yeah. blackface mm -hmm. and yep. um and so that's been a huge part of the history and and i'm mohawk i'm from the reservation Gahnawage, and we have such beautiful funny scary stories from from all of our cultures and what we get to do in reservation dogs is tell a piece of of sterling harjo's uh life and upbringing who is the co-creator uh with taika ytt um and we are telling that specific story from that muskogee creek and seminole culture from that part of the world and it's it's groundbreaking on on many levels it's so well done. I mean, I just can't stress that enough, and I hope people check it out. Um, I think you brought up a really good point about, you know, red face, and obviously I certainly understand that. Um, for so long, stories in Hollywood uh, made, like, the white cowboy to be, you know, innocent and the hero. Um, and it, these stories excluded the actual narratives of what was really happening in Native American culture. It wasn't focused on violence. It wasn't focused on forced displacement. It wasn't on uh, rape and genocide and kidnapping kids and putting them in these, you know, Christian schools. Um, so the authentic storytelling here really uh, comes through. Tell me, uh, what was it that attracted you to this project? And were you a part of the inception or did you join um, after it was already kind of being written and developed? So I joined part of like the regular casting process as an actor. I got a casting breakdown, um, but the indigenous film scene is so tiny. And so I've been a big fan of Sterling Harjo's and also of Taika's um, since their early films that went to Sundance. And so when I read the casting breakdown, it was actually very reminiscent of one of my favorite films of all time, Taika Waititi's 2010 film, Boy. Um, and, and Reservation Ducks felt like the native of American version of that, and I knew that I needed to be a part of it. You, indeed you did, uh, and your presence is definitely integral to this show. Um, so the series is not an outright um, political commentary. I mean, I think the underlying uh, theme of this show, the subtext is that, that for many young people of color, just by um, your very existence, uh, you're somewhat political. But talk to me about how like the political theme surfaces in the show. I would say that one of the ways in which it surfaces is by turning the mirror to the audience and in, in what they imagine indigenous people to be. And they do that specifically through uh, Dallas Goldtooth's character, the spirit, William Knifeman, who he plays hilariously. Um, <laughs> when people think of Native Americans, they think of us on horseback and uh, in buckskin and as these historic ancient beings, as opposed to being modern day people. I'm like, yes, my existence as a queer Ganyat Gahaga Mohawk indigenous woman makes me inherently political but I also am not like pining over my indigeneity all the time sometimes I'm right. like watching reality tv and eating chips and I think <laughs> reservation dogs is a great example of that and shows that we're we're here and we're funny and we are surviving and thriving
I so love everything you just said. I wish I could play it on the loop. And I just want our viewers to know in a world for so long, uh, the complexity um, that exists across 500 federally recognized uh, indigenous uh, tribes and beyond has been flattened to sy symbols. And you are disrupting that space and doing it beautifully. So thank you so much, Debbie Jacobs. You are always welcome uh, back on this show. And please congratulate your castmates because this show is amazing. Thanks for joining us and good luck to you.